was pretty quick. Now, here we go. 62,800,000. 000, 62,800,000. 62,800,000. Fantastic. So what we've created is actually running properly. Let's uh, just mess things up a little bit. Let's um, say that we are going to, instead of putting in the same value every time, because that's pretty useless, we want to change the value to, because um, this is the, the entered text we're going to put in. What we're going to do is we're going to take out that just that generic text, and we're going to enter a variable here. We're going to input a value with a variable as well. So we're going to say keyword to search. Okay. Now we have to ask for that as well. So I'm going to insert one thing above here above the the actual subroutine. Now I could put this right into the subroutine, or I could put it above. You know, it's really it's up to you. For this particular example, when it comes to creating variables and that, I'll usually separate all the variables into its own subroutine so I can track the variables. Uh, that's more of an advanced programming thing. But uh, for just this one here, I'm going to create another user interface. But this time I'm going to create what's called text box. Keyword. Okay, do you notice that it's missing that extra variable that we want? Okay. We want to do a refresh. Okay, let's try that again now. So if you're ever missing a variable, you can just type it in again, or you can do a refresh. And now we see the keyword to search. Okay. So let's try this bot now. Oh, look at that. We have an error. Now this is an error you're going to see quite a bit in UBOT. This here is an out of range exception. Okay, the index was out of range. That usually happens when you're performing. I'm going to move this down a little bit here. I bet you we're going to see the box stop. See how it's purpled here? That's where the actual bot failed. Why? Because we didn't enter anything. There was nothing to enter and we did a search. You see how Google doesn't go to the next page. If you don't put anything into the box, so when it did a search in a page script, there is no way to catch the fact that that actual instance of about does not show up. So we have to figure out a way to protect ourselves against that. Okay? We want to make sure that the page that we're scraping has this information on it. Or else we we're going to see that error. Every time we run this, it's going to get to that command. It's going to throw that error. And that's something we don't want. So if you ever see out of range exception, nine times out of ten, you're trying to scrape something that's not on the page and it has to see it. It just can't overstep it. How do we fix that? I'm going to click insert to select the command, click insert to put one command over top of it, right click, and I'm going to use a flow command called if. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, because with the if statement, I can say, if something's on the page, then do this. So we're looking for this information right here. If of about is on the page, so let's right click. Now you can, this is a cheater way to grab information that you need. Okay, I'm going to just do a control C for copy, cancel. Okay, search page. If that's on the page, now I can grab this here and just drop that right in there like that. Okay, if that's on the page, then do that. Let's run our bot now. And of course, we don't get an error now because this command here is being overstepped because it's not seeing when it does a page search of about is on the page. This is one piece of code that I recommend you use all the time, especially when you're doing any kind of page scrape. Check to make sure before you scrape a page that the information is actually on the page. You can still see the error if you have not refined your search on your page script enough and you see more than one incidence. So you'll see one part but not the other. I have a, a bot right now that has that problem. Um, but, you know, this here will save a lot of grief for you. So now, let's try this now. Let's put in something here. I'm going to put in um, UBOT Studio.
Look at that. We have the error again. I wonder why. Let's take a look here. Once again, it's an out-of-range exception error, so it's got to be a scrape error. Where does it get hung up? It still gets hung up in the same place. So, I wonder why that's happening. Let's take a look here. On our page scrape, now, and once again, it's very important to know a little bit of HTML. This is a bold closing tag. Bold closing tag. Then we have up about. Then it bolds a number. Okay, we grab the number. And then the second part is a four. And it, it closes. And this is the entered text. Oh, look at that. That was for the previous search that we did. So we have to fix that. You see that you see how this has changed. This is for the actual text that was entered. So what we can do, we can do a couple things here. The best thing to do is we can right click on this. Okay, insert string. We can select this section here. We can actually delete this whole section. That's one thing we can do. But I'm going to do something a little more fancy. I'm going to actually insert the keywords to search. Okay, you see it's stuck that one at the end there. I'm just going to grab that. I'm going to cut it, control X, and I'm going to substitute it in here for this text here. And let's see if this works. You see, I always try to make my refinements as strong as possible, as good as possible. Let's see if this still causes an error. Okay, no, so it just works perfectly. Now, what would happen, and you always got to think of what a user could do, they put a space in front. Okay, look at that. Once again, it's throwing an error. So maybe what we're doing is not the best thing to do. So let's just insert a string here again. And I'm going to get rid of the rest of the stuff here. Okay, so let's try that now. Okay, so it's grabbing it no matter what now. Let's try something else. Stuff to collect. Everybody's got stuff, so that's a good thing to start with. Stuff to collect. So there we have it. It's grabbing the number perfectly. And that is your first lesson. What would what have we done here? Let's just recap. First of all, we've created a and actually let me just do a refresh. You see how these are backwards? Let's do a refresh. See it switch them around. And what the, the refresh does is it takes the list, looks at when the user elements are actually called, and then presents them in that order. So first of all, we created a user uh, interface text box which grabs keywords that we're going to enter into here. Second, we run a subroutine, which is pretty much the rest of our program. Navigates to Google, waits for the page to finish. Let's just go here. Chooses this attribute here, which is the Q. Like if we look at the attribute, Q. Um, then we change that value by inserting the keyword that we put up here. Well, this variable here. Next, we choose the button. The button name is button G. And you can see button G. Okay, we click chosen. We had to wait for the page to finish. You've got to make sure you put those wait finishes in. If there's any one place that's going to mess your code up, is wait finish. If not having it, that is. Next, let's just put something in here. Testing one. Okay, so let's say we've waited, it's finished. We are looking for, because we don't want to throw an error if this information is not on the page. So we are looking for the of about. Oh, there it is, okay. So then do the code. So it looks for the of about, and then the for, which is in between the bold tags, and it scrapes the information right in between. And it's just, and then finally, once it scrapes that information, it puts it into the variable search competition. And then we use another user interface stat monitor, which is the total competition, to display that variable. So let's do one more test, and we'll be done for this particular testing one, this particular tutorial. So there you go. 
I will put the this particular tutorial online as well, the actual bot code, so you can play with it to see what it's all about. Uh, I'll leave it as it is. It's not the cleanest code, but it does do the job. I think the only thing that I will do, and this is something you can do, you can grab a command most of the time and dump it, and that way it puts everything for this particular function within a subroutine. So there you go, Frank Thomas, ubotjunkie.com. Enjoy.